Yeah, let me show you something, yeah? No, this is my son, yeah? That's my son. Can you see that? Yeah, it's my son. Sir. Huh? Get in my face again. It is not acceptable um, to threaten someone's life. And so I wanted to make sure that I got him on camera and I also verbalized that it's not okay to say something like that. Um, at which point he again turned around, started to make his way towards me very aggressively. As you can see, he starts taking off his, his, his backpack. I, d I didn't know whether he was going to get a gun out of there or something like that. If he wanted to like fight me, I don't know. Um, but by the time he reached me, he instead, he, you can see he swiped with his arm, arm on the camera. Um, so he ended up hitting my hand with enough force that my own video camera went flying. Thankfully, we still, um, we still got the footage from the encounter. So I have filed a, a report with the police. Um, hopefully he can be identified um, so that he can be charged because um, we should be able to peacefully demonstrate without having to worry about our safety. So the tolerant left, folks, the tolerant left that burns buildings in the name of Black Lives Matter, and the tolerant left that hits women who are uh, protesting for the rights of unborn babies in the name of women's rights. If somebody gets raped by somebody and they're like, I, I'm a 16 year old and I can't have this baby, think you should keep it? It's a baby. Yes. If someone was raped and she gave birth and she decided to kill her three year old child. Today I have with me Josie Lutke to describe a little bit more uh, what happened that day. Yeah, so I'm one of the youth coordinators at Campaign Life Coalition. So we're a national pro-life and pro-family organization seeking legal protection for all human life from conception till natural death. Um, and as part of that, um, we go out regularly on the streets of Hamilton to do activism, to have conversations about abortion with regular people. So yeah, we certainly, we can refer women who are post-abortive, men who are post-abortive to help. And then also um, those who are experiencing a crisis pregnancy, um, we can also refer them to necessary resources. We do support um, women who are in um, situations where they can't provide for their children, whether it be before birth or after birth, um, we, we help. Um, provide them resources for that. Yeah, exactly. That That's a very purposeful organization. Could you tell us more about the situation that happened uh, two days ago on the streets of Hamilton when you were out with your interns advocating for, 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 for the rights of the unborn? Yeah, so as I mentioned, um, we do this regularly. We go out with abortion victim photography. Our goal is to both expose the humanity of the preborn and the inhumanity of abortion. Um, obviously, these images are very shocking, but we um, often have civil conversations with people, even those who disagree with us. That is our goal. Um, some of them do change their minds, which is always nice to see. Uh, unfortunately, on Thursday, um, we had a couple of incidents, um, which are thankfully rare. Uh, one man um, approached a couple of our female interns and um, brought up pornography on his phone and shoved his phone in their faces. He made it clear that his intent was to disturb them. They made it clear that they did not want to see porn at all. Um, he eventually walked into the mall. Um, and only afterwards did I find out what happened. Um, for safety reasons, we have someone who film, uh, films activism. And so that was me um, on Thursday. I, was, I had a video camera and I was recording. And so um, afterwards I found out that, that that's what he had done. Later on, he ended up coming back out of the mall, um, approaching a different intern, um, also shoved his phone in, in his face um, and had uh, porn on his phone. Um, so I intervened. Um, I talked to the man um, for a little bit um, before finally his, his girlfriend came um, and dragged him away. Um, so I was already kind of um, irritated because there's an appropriate way for you to express your disagreement. That definitely was not one of them. I made it clear that this was not okay. Um, he, he, he can be upset, um, but it, what he was doing was, was you know, in, in my eyes, that shouldn't be permitted um, to, to show people pornography without their consent. Um, and he didn't care. He didn't care if he was transgressing the law or not. Um, 
so then when when activism was almost finished, um, a different man came and shoved his phone in my face. And I was thinking, again, really, is someone else going to try to show me porn this hour? Um, I don't think it was. Um, I didn't look, but he said something about like, that's my son or my son. Um, but I just said, no, thank you. Um, so that's when you can see in the video that he begins to walk away. Um, one of my interns wasn't feeling well just because of the sun or whatever. So I was walking over to her, to her already. I asked her how she was doing. Um, and then I hear this man say that if I put a camera in front of him again, he would put a bullet in my head, um, which is bizarre because I, I not approached him at all. Um, yeah, exactly. just been he was the one approaching you in the, in the video. We saw him approaching the camera himself. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so I immediately swivel around at that point because, um, again, there are ways that you can express your emotions. That is not one of them. It is not acceptable um, to threaten someone's life. And so I wanted to make sure that I got him on camera. And I also verbalized that it's not OK to say something like that, um, at which point he again turned around, started to make his way towards me very aggressively. As you can see, he starts taking off his 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 backpack I, d I didn't know whether he was going to get a gun out of there or something like that if he wanted to like fight me <laughs> i don't know um but by the time he reached me he instead he you can see he swiped with his arm arm on the camera um so he ended up hitting my hand with enough force that my own video camera went flying thankfully we still um we still got the footage from the encounter so i have filed a, a report with the police um hopefully he can be identified um so that he can be charged because um, we should be able to peacefully demonstrate without having to worry about our safety. 100%, that's what should be happening in a civil society, in a democracy, in a democratic country, right? You shouldn't fear for your life when expressing your opinions. But I feel, I feel like in the past few years, the rise of, there has been a rise in terms of violence from the left or from the pro-abortion individuals when pro-life people are holding rallies. We've seen just earlier this year at the March for Life on Parliament Hill, a group of um, pro-abortion protesters trying to march towards a group of pro-life protesters that were peacefully there and the police trying to block them from approaching them too much. We've seen attacks on pro-life individuals in the United States. We see people threatening to kill the lives of Supreme Court judges in the United States because they want to defend the rights of the unborn baby. Um, have you noticed this happening as well? I, I mean, I certainly have encountered violence before. Um, unfortunately, um, my um, former co-worker, Marie Claire Bizonette, she was also kicked in the shoulder um, when she was doing pro-life activism and, and Rebel News covered that incident as well. Um, they followed Jordan Hunt's um, case uh, through the courts. Yeah, so um, I, what, what, I, what I noticed, though, is the amount of tolerance for the violence from the public. So in this case, the, the man who attacked me, you know, he was clearly off kilter. Um, he probably had some things going on in his life. Um, the guy who showed us porn, he was completely calm and collected. He knew exactly what he was doing. He didn't care. Um, so that concerns me that he wasn't worried about the repercussions for his actions. And I am very disturbed by everyone in the comment sections who say that, you know, maybe violence is normally not acceptable, but because they were pro-lifers, then it's okay. This is the exception. And that, that very, like, very much concerns me. And I've seen a rise in that, um, especially because of the news of uh, Roe v. Wade south of the border. I think people are feeling like um, on this issue, suddenly, we can forget about women's rights and it's okay to attack someone you disagree with. Like he might've hit the camera as well, but he definitely hit me. It wasn't just the camera. Um, and so I, I was slightly bruised. Um, you know, I'm, I'm thankful that it was not worse. Um, it could have been worse. And I'm also thankful that it was me and not um, one of my interns because I'm prepared for something like this. Um, whereas, you know, some of them are, are younger than me and they're doing this for the first time and they're understandably nervous. Um, and yeah thank you for joining me today and i hope that i i don't i, I don't think that uh, the incident that happened two days ago is going to hold your team and yourself back from advocating for the rights of the unborn uh, baby so i i wish you the best in that where can people find your work where where can people encourage you and encourage your organization 
Um, I really recommend that they visit our website, campaignlifecoalition.com. If they want to follow CLC Youth specifically, um, our youth chapter, they can go at CLC Youth Pro Life um, on all social media channels um, or uh, at Campaign Life um, on Twitter or Facebook. Great. Thanks so much for joining me today, I, Josie. Thank you very much, Mom. I appreciate your time. Listen, I don't think that I need to remind you that a story like this would never be picked up by any journalist from CBC, Global News, CTV News, or any other news outlets like this that receive enormous funding from Justin Trudeau's government. If you want to make sure to never miss anything that's happening, any real news, and make sure you want to encourage Rebel News' real reporters that will bring you actual factual story, make sure to chip in a buck or two and consider donating to Rebel News to encourage us and to allow us to continue to bring you the other side of the story and bring you stories that CBC would never dare to touch.